well, we've had a video of Matt Frazier suggested by one of the people who comments on the videos. Yeah, thank you, Hamilton. His name is Peter, and he uses P-J-D-E-L-U-C-A-L-A -E as his YouTube channel name. So we've been having a back and forth for a day, and I either I'm not getting it or he's not getting it, but uh, let, let's let you guys listen to this and, and tell me what you think, okay? So Matt Frazier's doing a reading. And Peter gave me this reading and said, here is a typical Matt Frazier reading. Analyze it. So I go through it. And, well, you can read about this in the comments. The point is, he tells me, Peter, some information saying this is what Matt Frazier did. Now, I'm going to let you listen to it. It's 55 seconds long. So listen to this. Then let's come back and discuss and discuss it. Now, I'm just going to put up the audio. Hi, Lex. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Matt? Good. Where are you guys from? California. All right. Well, first of all, I'm glad that you're here. And right away, the soul that's coming through that I kept hearing, there was questions over suicide or an overdose. That was my 11-year-old niece. Because right away while I'm connecting, I kept hearing her soul coming through. And she was like, my family needs answers. My family needs answers. And right away when I'm connecting with her, she was like a little angel here in this world when I'm connecting with her. And she says to me, Matt, my family calls me their angel, their angel, she says to me. She first of all wants to thank you for the poem that you have for her. She keeps talking about the poem. This is like, oh, when it happened, um, a bunch of lyrics and it became like a poem. And um, it was just between me and her. You heard it. I heard it. Here's what Peter writes. He says, he starts, Matt, starts off by saying that the woman's niece died of a suicide or an overdose. He also says that she wrote a poem and then only her and the niece knew about the poem. Okay. That's what Peter writes. He heard that when he listened to this video and gave it to me as a typical reading from Matt Frazier. Okay. Say that again. Matt starts off by saying that the woman's niece died of suicide over or an overdose. He also says that she wrote a poem only she and her niece knew about that poem. Okay, listen again, specifically, and then let's talk. How are you, Matt? Good, where are you guys from? California. All right, well, first of all, I'm glad that you're here. And right away, there's a soul that's coming through that I kept hearing there was questions over suicide or an overdose. That was my 11-year-old niece. Because right away while I'm connecting, I kept hearing her soul coming through. And she was like, my family needs answers. My family needs answers. And right away when I'm connecting with her, she was like a little angel here in this world when I'm connecting with her. And she says to me, Matt, my family calls me their angel, their angel, she says to me. She first of all wants to thank you for the poem that you have for her. She keeps talking about the poem. This is like, oh, when it happened, um, a bunch of lyrics and it became like a poem. And um, it was just between me and her. Okay, first off, this video is from Matt Frazier's personal YouTube channel. So it can be edited. We don't know what's missing. We don't know how much he knows about the person ahead of time. You know, so put that out there. The other thing, this is a Zoom conversation he's having with her. When he, when he appears on the screen and then when she says something, she appears on the screen, that speaker view. In other words, we... You and I and the, all the other viewers only see who's speaking. Matt can see everything all the time. He can see her. He can see all the other people in the background. There's at least three other people in that background. So when we see her reacting, we don't know what else she's reacting to. So as he's saying something, she could go, oh, you know, oh my gosh, oh, you know, she could be tearing up or whatever. And Matt's very good at reading these, these body language we give off. So we don't know what's going on, but Matt does, right? So let's just clear that up right there. There is body language, verbal, all sorts of stuff that's happening there that when Matt says something, he knows he's on the right track and continues on that because she is reacting that way. If she kind of was looking at the other people on the couch and they're all kind of going mm, no like that well guess what 
that part wouldn't make it into the video. It'd be edited out of Matt's reading because it's on his own YouTube channel and he only wants to look great. So if there's no hits, it's gone. We don't see it. We don't know it exists. It's edited out, right? So only the things that he thinks is going to make him look good are going to be left in that video. I don't know why I have to explain this, but we have to explain this to people over and over. And Peter writes this nonsense that Matt connected with her dead 11-year-old niece and that the woman wrote a poem for her. No, that's not what was said at all. This is wordplay. Matt is extremely good at wordplay. He says, and I've transcribed this, right away there's a soul coming through that I kept hearing there were questions over a suicide over or an overdose, period. There is a soul coming through. Now, if it had not hit that woman, and somebody in the background went, oh, then Matt would have said, that's the person right there. That's the person who the soul is coming through to. I want to talk to them. Who is that person? That's exactly how it works. Matt's notorious for doing this. I've seen him live. This is how he does stuff. So the person around who reacts to it is the one who's going to get the reading. If the person who's supposed to be the target is just kind of like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know anything about a suicide or an overdose. So she reacts. She's motivated. She's excited. And she says, that was my 11-year-old niece. So that's completely different from Matt saying, your niece came through. Your 11-year-old niece came through. That's what Matt said. Matt said the 11-year-old niece came through. Matt did not say that. He said a soul is coming through that were connected to suicide or an overdose, which are two different, whatever, you know. We could argue about that. Can't you be specific? Anyway, so that said, then, so she's making the connection and giving him the information, oversharing, which is what all motivated sitters do. And then, I'm looking for it, exactly where I have it quoted, because we went back and forth over many things. You said, in other words, Peter said, that Matt had said that the woman had, had wrote the poem. And that's not true. He didn't say that. He said, she first of all wants to thank you for the poem that you have for her. She keeps talking about the poem. That's it. That's what he said. He didn't say she wrote the poem. He said, you have a poem for her. Now, Peter seems to think that I'm overreacting and he keeps saying I'm splitting hairs. I'm saying this is wordplay. And the person listening, including Peter, hears something that feels like it was accurate. But what Matt Frazier is doing is something very vague. It's He's throwing out a vague statement to a person who's emotional, who's listening to hear stuff because she wants to connect so badly. And so when he does that, she latches onto it. And Matt just says, yeah, that's exactly what she's saying. Okay. I don't understand why this is a problem and why I can see this and this Peter person cannot see that. He's misrepresenting what he heard. Now, he probably does it innocently. This is common. People don't hear correctly. They're not really listening. I've been doing this for years. I've, I I know what I'm listening for, and I have transcribed it. Anybody want to have a problem with whatever I just said, you can listen to it again yourself. It's easy to hear, all right? Then Peter, because he doesn't want to address those too much, he just says, I keep saying that, he says that um, I'm splitting hairs. He brought up the poem that was very personal between the two. Yeah, he brought it up. Poetry, especially when somebody's died, is common. You do poetry, that's just common. 
it's it's not like it's not like some freaky thing. So a poem about somebody who's died, it doesn't mean they had to written it. They found a poem, they saw a poem, they read it at the funeral. A poem. So it's not that's not a hit. That's just vague. And then here's the thing is Peter's insisting that that helped that woman and that I should not be doing what I'm doing and that I should, I'm the bad person because I'm pointing this out because I should allow this to happen. Like I can stop it. Obviously I can't, that I should, I should knock it off and not be talking bad about Matt because it helped her. You saw the emotion, how she felt better afterwards. Well, yeah, she felt great afterwards. Well, heck yeah. She thought she was in contact with her little, her little niece. Is that a help? That's up to you. I don't think it's helpful because I think it's lying. It's lying to her. He's manipulating her emotions. He's manipulating her emotions for his own YouTube channel so he can continue making money and he can hopefully get his show back, which is gone, long gone. So he's doing this to manipulate her. He doesn't care. He's just making stuff up. He is not a therapist. If this woman is grieving, she should reach out to her best friends or a religious person in her world or somebody very wise or a grief therapist. Reaching out to somebody like Matt Frazier who's just cold reading her. It's cold reading, cold, cold vagueness. You tell me, am I in the right? Am I missing it? Am I totally wrong? You can read the exchange. It's all over. All of my Matt Frazier video comments. Peter has been leaving me messages. We've been talking all day. So you can look at that if you want to. He says, I'm mean and mad and angry. Well, hell yeah, I am. I cannot understand why the, there's so many people out there who seem to think that lying to people, manipulating their grief, is okay just because they leave feeling okay we don't know what the, she's how she feels later we don't know if it's worse afterwards and when he's just telling her stuff about this suicide accidental dose or whatever it doesn't mean it's real so he can be manipulating real facts things that are not true that are really should be known i don't even have a clue because i'm not going to offer what actually happened to an 11 year old who took an overdose? Did she do it on purpose? Did it, was it an accident? Did somebody feed it to her? Did they trick her into it? What? Matt does not have the answer. I don't have the answer. And none of us should be giving this grieving aunt any advice. And yeah, I am pissed. I'm sorry, but this stuff. Leave your comments. I want to hear what you have to think. Thank you.